Welcome to Out of the Woods, a docu-series hosted by me, Grayson Kempster. In today's episode, we're going to be looking into plastic pollutants, how this impacts our marine ecosystems, and what that means for the survival of the sea turtles. You're joining me alongside the Manchester Ship Canal on Rimrose Valley Country Park. And it's here at small freshwater lakes and canals like this that plastic pollutants begin their journey to our marine ecosystems. Between 1950 and the year 2000, the Earth's annual plastic production grew substantially. From 9.2 million metric tons to a whopping 275 million metric tons. This was a result of a massive growth in demand for plastic across the World War II period when companies would use plastic polymers as cheaper alternatives to other materials. This was used in enhanced weaponry, auto vehicles and modern technology as we know it today. Nowadays, the plastic industry is still growing at a phenomenal rate. Nowadays, we produce 300 million metric tons of plastic annually, with single-use plastics such as carrier bags, food wrappers, disposable cutlery and cosmetic microbeads being the main contributors. A staggering 80% of this total ends up as waste, doomed to pollute our oceans and marine environments. However, our biggest plastic pollutants within marine environments comes from fisheries. So the likes of lines, ropes and nets are responsible for as much as 50% of the plastic within our oceans. On average, approximately 640,000 metric tons of discarded fishing equipment is irresponsibly abandoned, dumped or lost in our oceans every year. Between 1996 and 2006, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association managed to clean up 511 metric tons of discarded fishing equipment from one of the largest marine conservation environments within the Hawaiian Islands. While sustainable fishing may have little impact on biodiversity and population decline, we still face an ongoing battle with many commercial fisheries who often use trawl nets which are massively unsafe for sea turtles. This creates a massive problem for sea turtles who become entangled in the ropes and lines. Often unable to free themselves, as many as 48,000 individual sea turtles are entangled in discarded fishing equipment each year. While 11,000 of these individuals are unable to free themselves, they often drown, resultantly having a decline in their overall population. While those who do manage to free themselves are often left injured, with lacerations or amputated limbs leaving them prone to disease. Not only this, but the sea turtle's mobility becomes restricted, having a direct impact on their ability to forage food. Their energy levels start to deplete and predation risk increases dramatically. The abandoning of fishing equipment, dumping lines and nets makes the waters a dangerous place to navigate, especially for newly hatched and juvenile sea turtles. If we look more closely at the life cycle of the sea turtle, you will see that post hatchlings make their way to open waters where they spend up to a decade in what's known as the pelagic stage. It's referred to as such because during this time they spend years of their life travelling by advection of the water's current and feeding off many surface organisms. Unfortunately, it's at this stage that juvenile sea turtles are extremely susceptible to entanglement from plastic debris, especially those that are surface buoyant, transported by water currents into oceanic gyres where they accumulate creating plastic hotspots in the open water. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, located off the coast of California in the USA, is the largest plastic hotspot in the world. After first being noticed in 1997, it's believed that the plastic has been accumulating since 1980 and is now actively three times larger than the size of France. It consists of 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic and weighs in at a whopping 90,000 metric tonnes. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is a convergence of the Eastern Pacific Garbage Patch stretching from California to Hawaii and the Western Pacific Garbage Patch which runs along Japan's coastline. It's in the subtropical gyre where the warm water from the South Pacific meets up with cooler waters from the Arctic that these plastics accumulated forming the biggest plastosphere. 
The plastosphere is the general name given to plastic hotspots in which organic contaminants can thrive throughout the marine environment, allowing persistent organic pollutants to be directly transferred into the marine ecosystem. Plastic waste can be naturally broken down through three processes, erosion, hydrolysis and photodegradation. Once refined, the polymers are what are known as microplastics, and these can range anywhere from less than a millimetre to five millimetres in size, and have been reported in all areas of the globe, from as far as Arctic glaciers and ice caps, to as high as Mount Everest and as deep as the Marianas Trench. Today, our marine environments are ubiquitous with plastics. While biofile plastics promote the colonisation of microbial bacteria on marine plastic waste, this means organic pollutants such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons have been found at significantly high levels in the blood cells of sea turtles. This influences gene expression as a biological response to this environmental change. In fact, it's even been proven that 100% of all juvenile sea turtles have tested positive for traces of microplastics within their genetics, meaning the impact from ingesting plastic pollutants is beginning to alter hereditary genetics. Another threat sea turtles face is their inability to distinguish reliable food resources such as seaweed, kelp, algae or jellyfish from plastic debris. While single-use soft plastics often resemble jellyfish, other hard plastics may elicit responsive behaviours known as olfactory cues which encourage sea turtles to engage with this dangerous pollutant. Once ingested, plastic can easily begin to obstruct the sea turtle's digestive tract. These blockages restrict food capacity, while the non-nutritional value of plastic begins to reduce energy levels and limit mobility, often leading to starvation. And while we witness the sea turtle population decline, we must acknowledge that within limited populations, there are limited breeding pairs. Now this has a direct impact on the reproductivity rate of a population, meaning sea turtles are in an ongoing battle with slow population growth and rapidly dwindling numbers.